Hi everyone, I'm here today uh, at Can Lion and I'm joined with some legends from the industry for, with Suki and Rankin. Suki is the chair at Exium. She was the founder of Oyster Catchers and also the founder of Let's Reset, which we're going to be talking about. And Rankin, um, what do I say about you? A cultural provocateur and a god of photography. I like just being called the legend. A legend. Just the legend. You just call me the legend. Is that good? I the feel legends, a bit old. The legend's here. The legend's Someone here. Someone said to me the other day, Siri, find me a legend. Oh no, I found one. Uh, <laughs> you can see how this conversation Which I thought was quite good. Go. I thought it was quite a good joke. <laughs> it's going to be great. So we are here to talk about their new project, Reset, which is a book about portraits capturing people's real emotions moments and celebrating real people. And we're also going to talk about some of the important issues that are at the heart of the book. So Suki, I'm going to come to you first. Tell us a little bit more about the Reset Project. Why does it matter? Why is it important? Well, it does matter because I think this conversation about mental health, about well-being and resilience is really fundamental to the way that we, ru we rule our lives, but also in the workplace. Um, and for me, I've had cancer three times. Um, I'm BRCA positive and I've spent eight years working with Macmillan Cancer Support, helping people with a cancer diagnosis, but also in my day job running transformation projects for lots of big brands, working with lots of agencies. And what I've found is, is a number of those transformation projects just haven't worked. And they haven't worked because we haven't put resilience and well-being at the heart of organisations. Rankin and I have got to know each other over a, a year or two. And um, what we both realised is we had a real passion about looking at well-being and resilience. Um, and we came up with this idea of having a book where Rankin's taking some awesome portraits. You've had one. Um, but also we're getting people to tell their stories. So either their stories like you told of uh, resilience and well-being um, that are really inspirational and it's fantastic to be able to see people like you in real positions of authority and influence who've got an amazing story and have been brilliant at their job. Um, but also just generally chief execs, senior leaders talking about the importance of thinking about well-being and resilience in the workplace. Okay, great. So, Randy, you, you've been taking the pictures here. Mm -hmm. What is the creative approach you've taken, and is there a particular emotional tone that you're trying to get across in the images? The approach is um, based on the idea that we're with selfie culture. We're creating a lot of kind of two-dimensional branding. Uh, I'm happy. I'm great. Everything's fantastic, and, um, and no one's actually showing their true emotions. Um, so I've really gone for let's get those emotions out. And what I really love about it is uh, just changing the, changing the whole tone of things, resetting the way that we talk about this stuff, resetting the way that we uh, put ourselves out there to the world. And um, the really interesting thing at in my work is I just see people doing far too much and I want them to, you know, for, for me creativity is about sometimes being bored and sometimes just going and reading and just not always um, having to feel like you're in touch, even in the office, you know, like going and being by yourself and, and thinking about stuff. So emotion and a little bit of a reset on how you're approaching the way you work. And did you find that people were a little bit vulnerable when they had those moments? Yeah, there was there was a few people. I mean, I've always found that photography is, in, is a great way of um, getting insight into people because they feel very uh, under the microscope. So. If you can make them feel comfortable, and if you can make them feel like they they can give something to you, then uh, they do they do start to feel vulnerable, or they do start to kind of become emotional. And I've had people, strangely, like look at a photograph and start kind of getting upset because I like I don't feel like that's me, or that looks like me, or even better that that's you've really captured me, and you've I feel like you've really you've really understood me. So. I'm really about um, photography being something for, for good. Um, and I love the democratization of photography. I love the idea that everyone's got a, 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 a camera in their pocket. And I just want people to start taking photographs that are insightful. So this is resetting that as well for me. And we've found, because we've been doing the filming the stories as well, we've had some very poignant, um, very emotional stories, which has been fantastic. 
But the other bit I hadn't appreciated is by bringing people together. So we had maybe like 20 people at a shoot um, that they're telling and, and expressing their stories as well amongst each other. to share each other's and stories. And that's been yeah. really compelling yeah. and really lovely, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And it's really lovely when you can see people get to that point where they yeah. want to be you know, vulnerable. Yeah. You what said. did it feel like for you? It felt very different. I've never had so much wind machine in my hair. No. <laughs> but there was that moment where you go, I don't just want the, the smile that you always see. I want you to express yourself in a different way, show us a different side of you. And that does make you have to think within yourself, well, what is that? What, what is it that's in here that I want to get out? Obviously, I would always go for a smile, but you wanted something else. We'll see what you come up with. <laughs> so, so at the heart of it was resilience and well-being. And, and you, Suki, have just set up a new consultancy, Let's Reset, really looking about how you create positive cultures in the workplace. Any key tips that you can share? Well, look, I think that um, the, t the key thing is to really begin to understand yourself. It's very easy in a working environment to think if you've got to do more, work harder, work longer yeah. hours, don't have time to think. We have this very macho culture, don't we? Whereas yeah. I'm really busy, I'm really important. Mm. And you know, that's, it is true. But if you take time, and people do different things, you know, I meditate, I think it's really important for me, that's good for my well-being. You know, we've talked about this, it's important to think about your emotional well-being, so for me meditation, your physical well-being, so that might be exercise, it's the food that you eat, um, and then your kind of financial well-being and what you need from your family. But simple things like walking it out, you know, when you're feeling very stressed, find a buddy, take somebody in the workplace, go and say, do you know what, I need a moment. Go and walk around the block, breathe, take time. But I think fundamentally for organizations to change, you've got to look at the ways of working. Mm. And you have to embed new ways of working. And I think what needs to happen is a complete revolution here. Yeah. It's no longer okay to say we work 10, 12, 15 hours a day, that we've sort of thought about flexible working. We need to go back to the basics and say what is a really modern, business working environment doing and look at it very differently and do it from the bottom up so get young people to think about it as well. So a key thing around resilience ranking is around having the confidence yep. to be able to express yourself in an authentic manner. What, what are your thoughts on how you can actually get that, how you can achieve it? Well, as yourself, as an individual? As an individual, yeah. yeah. I think um, for me it's the, 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 the idea of not having to have this absolutely perfect lifestyle that you're sharing on social or even with your friends like just being able to sort of have that moment where you're a bit more honest with yourself mm -hmm. and a bit more honest with the people that you're sharing stuff with um, and I think that that for me you know the photography what's happened with photography and the kind of the creating this perfection or, or this perfect lifestyle through even the images you take of yourself um, that's kind of created this real separation between what photography for me is about, which is about actually kind of exploring yourself and being insightful about the world or showing something like, for example, like your family. Why don't you go and photograph your family and try and create memories, don't create brands, create, create something that's about you, uh, that's not about kind of what you want to be seen as. Um, and then that, I guess that's kind of actually just being, you, you know, honest and unique and that's the thing that I love and it's I don't understand why people want to look like other people I'm like yeah. why would why would you why would you want to look like someone else why don't you want to be completely unique because that's what's much more interesting I definitely think there's a theme here around you were talking about the world of work being very machismo but also yeah. the, the importance of showing vulnerability yeah. and I've certainly felt that you know through you know my, my own leadership style I think has been enhanced at the moments where I have shown that vulnerability because it gives permission for people to be their real authentic self yeah. Yeah. and so it sort of spreads so from everyone yeah. kind of being like the soldier yeah kind of yes. the perfect that's not real people no that's no. not where that's, that's no and what you really yeah. find is that when you start doing that you get so much support okay. yeah. and, and people yeah. really get behind you and uh, and, it, and it happens time and time again. It's just making that like first step yeah. and going, oh, well, I'm just going to show something about myself that I may be not comfortable with. And yeah. people, can, can, you can get some really good, yeah, you can get some get positivity out of it. Yeah, I think that, that visible leadership yeah, that's thinking good. about yourself yeah. as a leader. You know, we've talked before, haven't you? The impact that you make in the room. If you're a great leader, you, you give more to the room than you take away. So you don't drain things out or make people over, over exercised or um, uh, uh, it's difficult when you walk into the room. But 
going another level is being a very visible leader and speaking about things like that. And it's hard to do. Yeah, and, a, and asking people as well, you know, what do you think? You know, that's a massive thing. Like, yeah. one of the things that I love about leading a team is hearing all of the voices around the table and not just me telling them what to do. Like, me telling them what to do doesn't really get us anywhere. Whereas when you hear every voice, something comes to the, to the table, you're like, oh, that was not what I expected at all. And I think that that, that for me, is what's important. Great. Last question to you, Rankin. Here we are in Cannes, the home of creativity, advertising. On your travels this week so far, have you seen anything that really embraces this authenticity, either in real moments, real people, real emotions? Anything that um, come to mind? That's a good one. Yeah, I think the Dove campaign, which is pretty much up and down the closet, it's like really exceptional. And um, it is something that we've been talking about for a long time, but I think the execution of it is particularly good. And I did see a brilliant um, ad for Aero Mexico, which I just thought was like one of the best um, ads that I've seen about you know asking Texans what they think of Mexico and them all saying, "Oh, one, you know, I don't like Mexico." And they did DNA tests and the discount that, that the, <laughs> the amount they were Mexican, they would give yeah. them as a discount in their travel, which I thought was brilliant personally. Brilliant confronting prejudices, yeah. right? Uh, we're going to end on a bit of a Facebook tradition, which is our quick fire round. Uh -oh. Don't overthink uh -oh. it. Okay. I'm going to ask you both, night in or night out? Oh, night out. Night in. Night in. <laughs> in. He's changed. Night in. He's changed. He's changed. Night in. You first. Uh, Scotland or the south of France? Scotland, because I'm Scottish. I know he's Yeah, isn't. originally. Oh, gosh. Um, I'm not Scottish. I'm not Scottish. I'm Cornish, so it's not Scotland. It's south of France okay. in the sunshine. Casual or smart? Casual. Yeah, casual. <laughs> no, it's got to be smart, hasn't uh, it? I love heels. Yeah, oysters or scallops? Neither. Ooh. Oh my gosh, my company's called Oyster Catchers. Ooh. It's got to be oysters. Oysters. Uh, good book. Snails. Sorry. Snails. Good book. Good film. Oh, oh that's, that's impossible. too hard. I love films and I adore books. I do both every week. I mean, I love both, but I have to say, a good book is brilliant. Yeah. Good book. And finally, because we are in Cannes, mm. red, white, or rosé. I cannot answer that question. <laughs> oh, Rosé, absolutely. Thank you so, so much for being with us. It's been oh, absolutely fantastic. Thank Good you. luck thank for the launch. I'm really you. excited. Thank you for the time. And privileged to be a part of it as well. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your support. We really appreciate it.